Welcome to Nevertheless Podcast with Bidemi Makmodi, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. Today, you would learn how to discover your essence and live more powerfully. Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're tuning into the Nevertheless Show, a show for organic leaders and leader perennials. My name is Bidemi Mahmoudi. It's another month and we have another series for you. This month we want to explore trauma and its impact on people of faith. You know, do people of faith experience bad things? Mm -hmm. And when they do, what happens? Are they supposed to just move by faith? and continue to just plow and pretend that it did not happen to them? Or should they acknowledge what has happened? If they acknowledge, are there parameters or systems in the body or in the church to help us heal and recover from trauma? If and when we do recover from trauma, what do we do with what our new normal? What do we do with it? Is it is it possible to uh, utilize it for some good or should we just also hide ourselves our heads in shame and never show up mm. because the last time i checked divorce a spousal death the death of children and loved ones and parents mm. failed businesses and such like and such like children who go off the path mm. all of these things and then some happen to both believers and unbelievers. The Bible says that it rains on both the just and the unjust. But in my years in the work that I do, one of the conversations that I do not think the church is properly equipped to have is the conversation about trauma. Now, it's one thing for someone like me who has made it something that she needs to understand, to understand it and do my best to help people along the way. But it's another thing completely when someone has gone through that pain, when someone has had traumatic experiences and they're utilizing it for the glory of God. Our guest throughout this series in this month is my friend and my sister, Dr. Irene Olumesi, the one that I call the counterfeit doctor. <laughs> And her husband, Dr. Peter Olumese, is the original doctor. There is God. It's, it's an inside joke. We can't explain it. But she's Dr. Irene Olumese. And no, it's not an honor, honorary um, counsel. No, it's no, not. It's, she did read for it. But even then, because there are two doctors in her house, in our hearts and in our minds, one is original and one is fake. So she's the counterfeit. But for today, we'll just call her. Dr. Irene for no mercy. Like I said, she's my friend and my sister. Dr. Irene, first and foremost, is a certified trauma and transformational coach, ICF PCC certified. So she's not like me. She went to school for this thing. Okay, so I thought that not to just talk about the trauma conversation. Remember, I've, I've done a series on wholeness mm -hmm. where I spoke about brokenness and wholeness and that all of that conversation. Yeah. But I wanted to bring someone who has peeps and medals to show for the journey, both in her body, in mm -hmm. her mind and in book work. Mm -hmm. to explain to us or to help us through this journey to first to help you understand that it's not seen all of the time mm -hmm. that brings a believer to a place of trauma and then number two that trauma can be worked through mm -hmm. so help me make welcome dr irene olumese so welcome <laughs> thank you good to be here original <laughs> pastor yes so. um, and we both know in your house we have two pastors as yes, well but i'm the original one okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a joy to be here on Nevertheless Show. And it's a show that I've followed for many years. And so it's really a honor for me to be here with you today. So welcome. We're talking all things pain, trauma, and purpose. Mm, so mm. tell me, what is trauma? If if you had to explain it to someone, assuming that, you know, my, my grandma was alive and was listening. Okay. And she's not educated. How will you help her understand trauma? The simplest definition of trauma as anything that happens to you that overwhelms your capacity 
Hmm. to handle it please let's take that again anything that happens to you that overwhelms your capacity to handle it to handle it yeah. that is trauma yeah. that is it comes upon your life and mm -hmm. it breaks something fundamentally exactly. in you mm -hmm. or maybe it incapacitates you in such a way mm -hmm. that you are not able to move forward mm -hmm. after it yeah. that is a traumatic experience it's a traumatic experience and the and, and interesting thing is that trauma is very evasive Mm. And um, it is with us. Mm. Um, from statistics, at least, you know, every one of us have had one traumatic experience or the other. Okay, so wait. You mean I've had traumatic experience? Definitely. At one stage of, or the other in our lives, 75% of the population have had one traumatic experience or the, or the other. other. And so, we will all go through some things that will shake our foundation. But the question is, does it overwhelm us? Okay. When it overwhelms us, that mm -hmm. is when it becomes a problem that requires attention. Okay, so you're saying that trauma is invasive mm -hmm. and it happens to everyone. Yeah. But some of us are better able to handle trauma than others of us. To some extent. To some depending extent. Depending on what degree it yes. came on us okay, so, and when it okay, did. Okay, so again, mm -hmm. let me ex um, um, try and understand. Trauma has different levels. Yes. That's what you're saying. So yes. it's the reason I probably did not know I've gone through trauma <laughs> because maybe my level is not that high. Oh, well, thank you, Jesus. I can't come and go and kill myself. Okay, so... Um, we have agreed that it comes in different levels. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. Which is why different you say, types of yeah, trauma. Yeah, different types of mm. trauma, which is mm. why you say it is evasive. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you can't sit down here mm. and say every trauma is green. No. Neither can you sit here and say every trauma is red. Mm -hmm. But every trauma is trauma. It's trauma. I found out quickly when I was I started to deal with not just myself, mm -hmm. but uh, other people and this conversation about trauma. One of the first things I found out is that trauma is for people is not about the magnitude. Hmm. It's about the capacity, capacity to, handle. to handle it. Because I know people who went through divorce like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And I know other people who went through divorce and they've not been able to get up. Exactly. And it's been decades and, and they're just gets, where they are. Gets, yes. I know people who went through a, um, a loss, the mm -hmm. loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. And somehow within a few months, or a few couple to, of years, yeah. it's not that they forget, but they've been able to walk continue, through walk through it mm -hmm. and move on. Exactly. And then there are others that every single day they are crying and some of us are getting actually frustrated. I say, Cass, come on, stop crying. What's wrong with you? So what I'm hearing, uh, what I, I understand and I want you to help me uh, confirm whether I'm right, mm. is that just because it's not traumatic for me or it's not overwhelming for me does not negate the fact that it might be overwhelming for the other person. Absolutely. And that is why it is important for us to be trauma-informed. Hmm. And one of the things that we've had to be talking a lot about in recent times is that every one of us in a position of authority, in a position of influence, needs to be trauma-informed. We need to be able to recognize trauma when we see it in the way the people, person who is affected is responding okay. to it. And, present and presenting, and the way they are presenting with mm. it. And it has symptoms. You, you know, the person who has gone through a traumatic experience will tell you, I am experiencing this. For the, and depending on what caused that trauma, what would determine what kind of magnitude, what kind of impact it can have on that person. And then of and what course, where it goes, what intervention is required. It, it's required subsequently. If somebody comes and says that they keep having intrusive thoughts of something that has happened in the past and it is holding them back, then we need to pay attention. We don't tell them, get over yourself. Or we just don't make some prescription. And that's why I said that it's important for us to be trauma-informed so that in the process of trying to help somebody, quote-unquote help somebody, we don't re-traumatize them in the way we respond to them. Hmm. Okay, so yesterday I was taking new learning. I tried to take new learning for myself from time to time. Mm. And this was talking about the frequencies of communication. Mm. But rather than talk about types of communication, this person was talking about the different individuals and mm. how they communicate. Yeah. And he talked about commander. Don't ask me who's the commander. <laughs> and talked about challenger. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about a healer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I started to look at those things and I was like, this man is accusing me 
accusing me. He's getting really personal. <laughs> He's accusing me of things I don't want to, you know. But the point I'm, I want to highlight is that I've dealt with people who have been through trauma. In, and it's yeah. not in doubt that what they've experienced is traumatic. Yes. But I have dealt with some that are unable to articulate. Yes. What is happening? Yes, them. because what you said that made me start to think about it mm. was that the person who's passed through a trauma would mm. say to you, this is how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. But what happens when the person is unable to articulate to you what they are going through? Because not all of us can be certified trauma coaches. Of course, yes? of course. We and don't even need to be. Yes. We just need to be sensitized to yes, that trauma. Yes. And then when we think about, because I'm thinking that, okay, I lead a ministry. Mm. And because I lead a ministry, mm. I am... You know, I'm educated in that regard. Yeah. So it's not that I'm not educated. Yeah. But for adventure, I'm not educated. Yes. And someone is not able to articulate what they face. Mm. What am I supposed to do? See, let me give an example. You see, somebody comes up, you know, and shows, like, for example, they are afraid mm. or they are combustive. Mm. You, you know, they are combustive, combustive in their emotions, mm. little trigger mm. and massive mm. response in reaction. Mm. Something is riding beneath the surface there. Okay. And when you see a, a pattern of behavior that mm. deviates from what you know that this person has the capacity to do, mm. but yet there is a drawing back. There is fear. There is, um, there is, you know, anger, like I said, there is anxiety. You know, the person may not be able to articulate it and say, look, I, some, I mean, you just, I'm not feeling right. Something is going on with me. I'm not able to do the things that I want to do the way that I want to do them. It seems as if I'm constantly being held back. Or there is a particular thought that seems to be coming. Or there is a time in my, you know, a period that I get increasingly anxious. Maybe there's a period of the year, there is some sort of anxiety that comes. Those are indications that something is not, something, right. something is not right. So the next step will be if, you notice it and you have the capacity, you have the knowledge, you can begin to ask specific questions to how to get to the root of the problem. If you are not, then that's when you need somebody else to okay, intervene. Okay, so I want to ask a question. Yeah. Don't judge me, okay? Mm. But I need to ask this question. Yeah. How long does it take to, to heal someone, for someone to heal? <laughs> it is an individual process. Okay. Healing from trauma is so personal. We can't give it a timeline. You just have to work at the person's pace. Yes. Someone may be able to get all the tools and apply the principle and pick up their life and run with it. Somebody else will require tenderness, care, and you keep working at it. And it also has to do with the personality of the person and the extent of the damage that has taken place. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. I'm working with a client that um, was abused as a child. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple, because it could uh, uh, trauma could be one incident. And sometimes it could be repeated. And it could be multiple incidents, and it could be several types of trauma mm -hmm. that had happened so mm -hmm. far. The first thing was that the mother knew that something was not right because of the way the girl was so fearful, you know, and she had to be on her own and she was, she was losing her, her, her vibrancy. <laughs> and she called my attention if I could talk with this girl. But you know, because I am trained, we, I have, I know the questions to ask. And we began to go in and have this conversation. It first turned out that this girl was abused within the home when she was young. But she, she could not say it to anybody. Mm. And so she already developed a fear of certain spaces. And the parents were not aware of that. And they keep putting her in that space. Then the father died. Oh. And that was What's another mother? loss mm. that she never had the opportunity to oh. process. Oh. Then the mother remarried oh, and she could not, you know, mm. eventually relate with the male in the family. Mm. And then she got abused in a workplace. Oh. So you could see the build up. And to the point that this girl was no longer sleeping because every time she closes her eyes in the night, she sees things that scares her. Okay, so these things happen to people who are not born again. It happens to everybody. 
Yes. No, there's something wrong with their Christianity. Absolutely not. not. Have you forgotten you that, that your Bible wait, tells now, wait, you? Wait, wait, wait. Now, let me talk to you. I'm a pastor, I know. Okay. okay. <laughs> Are you sure this person was truly born again? <laughs> I'm playing the devil's advocate. I'm sure you understand yes. that. I don't work for the devil. But in this moment, we church needs to hear us and hear the us. The church needs Let's to Let's stop hear. sweeping mm. these things under the carpet. Mm -mm. I'm mm -mm. pretending that they don't happen to people mm -mm. of faith. Mm -mm. Just because we want to keep this thing, uh, this semblance of being together and being shielded by God. Here's something that I know. I need to talk about this. God does not need us to protect him. Absolutely God does not, not need us to defend him. Mm -hmm. And until we begin to acknowledge that these kinds of things happen within the within families of faith, and yes. that some of the perpetrators are people of, of faith. faith. It can happen. It, the interesting thing is that people can get traumatized in the church. Recently, we had in this conversation the trauma in the pulpit, trauma from the pulpit and trauma within the pews. There is trauma in from the pulpit, trauma in the pulpit, and trauma within the pews. And that's a conversation that we are not ready to have. We are, we are behaving like ostriches and burying our heads in the, in, under the Especially ground. Especially the church in Africa, yes? Or is it Believe me, over? it is worldwide. Wow. I have been traumatized within the church. I have been traumatized within the church. And I have learned to heal myself. Because I, I mean, I, I, I knew I had the capacity to be able to walk through that traumatic experience. And there are many people sitting within the church who have been traumatized right there in the church. So you come with trauma into the church. Something that happened, what we call adverse childhood experiences. It could be rape, it could be abuse, it could be neglect. Something that's shaken your foundation as a child. You had never had the opportunity to deal with it. You know, broken relationships of parents. You bring that into the church. The church does not recognize it. But because they do not recognize it and do not know how to deal with it, they end up compounding the problem and re-traumatizing you. Oh, well, all, they, all, those, all those traumas end up compounding our own problems as a church. I agree. absolutely agree. Because, because recently I was in the middle of many things and I was being really careful because I'm aware of trauma. And I know how some of these things present. Yeah. So I'm very careful. Maybe because, oh, like you said, I've been through one trauma level or another. Mm -hmm. So I was busy being careful and just didn't want to be because I, I represent the pew in yes. this regard. Yes. And I just didn't want to have to project. Oh, you represent the pulpit. The actually, pulpit. Not I'm the sorry. Pulpit. Yes, the pulpit, the pulpit. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, I, I just wanted to make sure that the pew was all right mm -hmm. until God called my attention to something he said no they are abusing you from the pew even though you're on the pulpit mm -hmm. and you think oh i have i'm the one that needs to make things right <laughs> do not open the door to be abused from the pew that, that shocked me that is also there that is also there there is something that my husband and i talk a lot about look if the pulpit does not practice self-care if the pulpit does not take care of itself because here's the thing that we miss out. God does not deal with us in silos. Mm. There is body, soul, spirit connection. Mm. Mm. And they are interconnected. Mm. What affects the body eventually affects the soul and vice versa. Yes. And will affect the spirit. Mm -hmm. So you could be a spiritual being and come out there. But if you're lonely, you have no friend, you have no one you can talk to. You are vulnerable. If you have to keep up appearances, you become vulnerable and you break down. Exhaustion also occur in the pulpit mm. and an exhausted pulpit mm. will bleed on the pew. Yes. A broken pulpit will bleed on the pew and become so vulnerable to also abuse coming from the pulpit as well. So it's from the pew, it, from the pew as well. So it's vice versa. This is a conversation that I thought we were going to build up into. But it looks like Irene opened the door and both just happened. I think we need to take a break. Um, we'll be right back. When we come back, we want to drill deeper into this trauma conversation that the church doesn't want to have. Mm. I want us to look at 
you know, I maybe Irene will share maybe just for five minutes a bit of her own experience, not the one that people inflicted, just the one that life inflicted. Mm -hmm. And then let's take it from there and see what it is that we can do with this. But the point is, like I said before, divorce, death, fraud, chronic illnesses, chronic illnesses, rape abuse, all kinds of things that happen out in the world also happen in church. Yeah. And because of that, we cannot pretend that trauma doesn't come to church. <laughs> ah, there's trauma a lot of trauma in, in church. church. Yeah. We may be wearing hats mm. and a lot of hands raised up mm. before God, mm. but there is trauma in the church mm. and it is time to begin to talk about it. Yeah. Do not go away. We'll be right back. This is still the nevertheless true. God bless you. Are you seeking to clarify your purpose and profit from it? Then get into Purpose University this year. It's a 10-week e-course for people of faith who seek to clarify their purpose and profit from it. The DNA of purpose has been put together to help you understand what purpose is about and also help you discover what your journey of purpose looks like. Register today at yourpurposeu.org where Bidemi McMorty would hold your hands so you can discover your purpose and live a more powerful life. In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life is just simple. Do not worry, you're not alone on this life's journey, as Bidemi McMordy shares powerful insights and principles from her everyday work and life experiences in her book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope, and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless and other books written by Bidemi McMordy, like The Wisdom of the Seed, Honor, The Theology of Work, and so much more from a bookstore nearby. Or call 080-905-63555. Or send an email to Bidemi at BidemiMacMordy.com to place your order. I guarantee you, you will make it. Nevertheless. Welcome back. It's still the Nevertheless show, and I still have with me Dr. Irene Olumese. We're talking all things trauma in the body of Christ and whether we are equipped to deal with it. Before we went on a break, I said to us that this is a conversation we do not want to have, mm. but it's a conversation that the day has come and we need to have. And we're looking at all the things that make for trauma, and we have identified that almost everyone she said 75% of people who are alive have experienced trauma. She also told us that trauma comes in different um, forms, variations and yeah. forms and then different grades mm. and levels. Mm. And that it is not even about the magnitude of the trauma that makes it traumatic and would require intervention. Mm. It is more about the person's or the individual's capacity to walk through what is a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. We have learned this um, in this episode that um, just because it is easy, it's, two people can go through the same thing. And just because they react or they respond differently mm -hmm. does not mean that the one that is crumbling, mm -hmm. it does not mean that that one who is crumbling is faking it. No, It no. is not no. usually a matter of faking, even though that happens, but this is not about it. So forgive me, I can be <laughs> skeptical sometimes. <laughs> that happens, but um, it's not in every situation no, that that no, is that. No, no, um, no, no, no. So I wanted to ask us, how do we begin to make this a normal conversation to have? Okay, I think it's first of all to recognize that in this world we'll have trials and tribulations. Mm. And we need to get that into our head because the Bible tells us that it's going to happen. The promise is that we be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome the world. So we do not need to be overwhelmed victims. Mm. We can be overcoming mm. victors, right? Mm. So that's the first point. The second thing we also need to recognize is that closely associated with every traumatic experience mm. is shame, mm. is guilt, 
is um, a vulnerability mm. to even attract more. Mm. That you find that's where you have people who may have a repeated pattern of behavior and you keep asking, why are they? Mm. So because if you do not heal from a past hurt, you'll have the capacity to attract more, more of, parts that of that to yourself. Really? And yeah, because mm. you, 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 you're vulnerable. Mm. And you begin to take, you know, develop coping mechanisms that may not be appropriate. A lot of us tend to have negative coping mechanism to deal with something that we do not want to bring into the surface. So if we begin to normalize this conversation, first of all, recognizing that it is present with us and it is not abnormal because we are living in a broken world. Wow. The problem we have as Christians sometimes is that as much as we want to practice faith and positive confection, this is not my portion, we forget that people have already happened. It has happened. Right. Life has happened to somebody and we can't confess ourselves out of it. I actually even think that it's even more um, fundamental than that in that um, we have an adversary. Yes. So whether it happened or it hasn't happened, because we have an enemy, it's good the be. chances that it will happen is there. Is there. Yeah. The chance is there that it will happen. So having this conversation does not negate our faith. No. It just makes people I actually think that if we had this conversation a bit more, people would have been better equipped. They would be aware. Exactly. You're sensitive. You're sensitive. You're sensitive. You're aware. And you know what your triggers are. And you know that help is available. The church is meant to be a place for healing. It's meant to be an emotional, spiritual hospital where we can come to with our traumatic experiences mm. and know that we will receive support. But are we equipped as churches to handle emotional hurts, to handle traumatic experiences? Do we have people within the, 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 the church who are trained to recognize this and support this? I because it that, does not have to be the pastor alone who is handling this. I think that we're going too far in asking, are we trained? I think we should begin by saying that, okay, if some young lady comes and says someone in church raped her, for instance, we should not say this is a church matter, let's settle it in church. Hmm. I think acknowledgement, and I think, you know, just having the conversation the way it's stipulated to have been mm, had mm, mm, mm. is the first step to people recognizing that they need to be trained. Before we get to the church, why don't we start by individual family well, I mean, units? Okay. Because trauma happens in, in relationships. The family, yes. And it ha trauma happens in, if I don't have a relationship with you, you mm. cannot. Yes. Right? We, you see, trauma happens in relationships, so mm. it happens in the families. Mm. And trauma can happen to a child right from childhood and grow up with that. And people will carry it. What if we have these conversations in the family that helps parents to be able to recognize when the child begins to do something that is amiss, mm. or behave contrary to normal. Mm. When the child begins to say that, I don't want to be with X, Y, Z. Mm. Instead of saying, keep quiet. Why don't we find out what exactly is going on behind that? Or when it happens and we know, we see the evidence, we bury it. And that compounds the problem because many of the cases we deal with today is because they said, like, shh, don't say anything. And shame thrives in silence. Uh, yes, you talked about shame and you talked about guilt. Yeah. And I understand it perfectly. Yeah. What I don't understand is, I don't know whether I don't understand it or maybe just continues to baffle and perplex me mm. that why would someone go through something mm. and we make the person the victim again by saying to them that they shouldn't talk about it. So the question I'm asking is, um, is there a science behind that? Is it that because I've been in situations where the parent will say, oh, don't talk about it because oh, yeah. the parent wants to um, put posture. Like I've been in situations where wives would say, no, we can't talk about it because wives want to posture <laughs> like they have something that is complete. <laughs> and every single time when eventually this thing becomes major, yeah. When, it become, when the day comes and the cup is full, mm. it becomes something that nobody is able to contain. Yeah. 
Yeah. What what is this thing about shame that will make even the ones that ought to protect us tell us to keep quiet because they don't want to feel the shame? Maybe a parent doesn't want to feel, feel the, the shame, shame that they did not protect their exactly. child properly. Exactly. But what is it about shame that brings us to that level? You see, like you mentioned earlier, post shame, when you know that I have, you feel a sense of failure. If the parents feel a sense of mm. failure that we could have protected this child, or if the person is a significant member of the family, mm. that even compounds the problem. Yeah. Rather than deal with it, we hide it away. And what we do not understand is that when we do not protect the vulnerable and we make the vulnerable become victim and we re-traumatize them, we actually compound the problem. It's never going to go away. Wow. Okay, so um, we're going to come back next week and continue this conversation about trauma, pain, and how we should handle, whether as individuals or as families or as the Church of Jesus Christ, because this podcast is focused on speaking to individuals, families, yeah. and people who are people of faith, and by extension, the Church of Jesus Christ. Mm. So we're not here to legislate for people outside of this demographic, mm. even though this would work for them. Yeah. But when we come back, I want us to take a look at the different levels. Mm. You know, if I find, how do I recognize personally mm. that um, um, I have been traumatized as a family? Um, how do I or as a parent, how do I recognize that perhaps mm. one of my child is experienced or is experiencing traumatic experiences? Mm. And then when we take it out of the family and we gather as mm. as families within mm. the body of Christ, mm. how do we um, recognize trauma and mm. what should we... I don't know whether we can take what we should do, but that's what we'll be looking at mm. in the next episode. So mm. again, it's the... Nevertheless, show a show for organic leaders and leader perennials, and we're getting mm. bolder and bolder. We're having some of the conversations that the church does not like to have. And today we were, we're looking at or in this series rather, we are looking at trauma and traumatic oh. experiences. Why the church doesn't talk about it? Why, mm. you know, um, as individuals, it takes us time before mm. we acknowledge it. Mm. We looked at the idea that a shame and, and a sense of yeah, failure yeah. tend to keep all traumatized rather than speaking up yeah. all of this and so much more we have looked at in this episode when we come back mm. next week mm. with Dr. Irene Olumese again we'll be looking at more remember I always tell you that when you know why God put you on earth i.e. Mm. I, I, discover your purpose mm. you live a powerful life yeah, yeah. and maybe because of the topic that we're treating in this season I want us to recognize again that nothing that has happened to you negates the fact that God can and will use you <laughs> Absolutely. so please <laughs> um, keep your faith with us next week <laughs> and um, if Jesus stories will be here God bless you and may those blessings manifest. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to Nevertheless. For more information and resources, call 08090563555 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmordy.com. Don't forget, discovering your purpose helps you live more powerfully. <laughs>